Welcome, little readers. It's Miss Gisa. Today, I have the perfect summer story for you. It takes place on a beach with a type of bird called a plover. Little Piping Plover, written by one of my favorite authors, Joanne Roach Evans. And you can find all of Joanne's other stories listed below. It is springtime at the seashore. Two tiny shorebirds called piping plovers take turns sitting on their nest in the sand. They are keeping their eggs safe and warm. Special people put up fences to protect the plovers while they are nesting. This beach has a yellow rope that lets the beachgoers know to stay away from the nesting area. Two weeks go by and the plover parents watch over the eggs. As the day gets warmer, lots of people come to the beach to play and rest. The plover parents need to keep themselves and their eggs safe on such a busy beach. People help watch over the plovers during the busiest times of the summer when the eggs and chicks are most vulnerable. They do their best to tend to their eggs each day and night for weeks. Then one day, Piping plovers typically lay three or four eggs. Seashells and stones help to hide the eggs from foxes, raccoons, rats, seagulls, and other creatures that would eat plover eggs. An egg cracks and slowly opens and a little chick tumbles out. Not long after, another egg cracks and another chick breaks out of the shell. After they hatch, the little birds take a moment to rest. Breaking out of a shell is hard work. The last egg to hatch reveals the littlest plover. She is the color of dry sand and looks as soft as a cloud in the sky. She blends in well with the beach sand, stones, and seashells. This is called camouflage. The littlest plover joins her siblings on their big feet as they look for bugs to eat. The plovers can run around, but they cannot yet fly. Their flight feathers will need time to grow. Until they can fly, their camouflage helps protect them. If they sense danger, they will lay low and stay still, hiding under their parents' wings or in the beach grass. Camouflage is when an animal's coloring blends in well with their habitat. Lots of animals use camouflage to hide. A habitat is the environment where they live. Can you find the littlest plover? Can you find her mama hiding too? Little plover and her siblings can't hide forever though. They will need to get down to the water's edge to eat. But my, what a busy beach. They may have to run around coolers, umbrellas, blankets, and chairs. Littlest Plover might even need to dodge a big beach ball. Watch out, Little Plover! Little Plover and her siblings are hungry and they must eat. They run down to the shoreline to search for food in the seaweed and wet sand. It's not easy, but it's worth it to find a tasty treat. They need to eat well and grow strong. Piping plovers eat marine worms, bugs, little crabs, and beach hoppers. They need to be strong enough to fly. Every day, little plover and her family go down to the shoreline and search for food. Piping plovers will usually try to avoid humans, but there is not a lot of space on a busy beach. Every day, their wings grow stronger and bigger too. Over a month goes by and little plover's wings change from soft down to strong flight feathers that can catch the wind. Soon, she can fly to the water's edge and back again, zoom. This is much safer than running the whole way. By the end of summer, the plover mom has left to start her journey south. Father Plover will stay around a little longer to watch over the chicks. Soon, they will all have to fly south to warmer beaches for the winter. Will Little Plover know when to go? 
is she ready to fly off on her own? She will know when it is time to fly south. She will sense it in the wind and she will take flight. Little Plover has learned a lot over the summer. Our little Plover is already a survivor. She has grown up on a very busy beach. And then in the back, there's a page where you can learn more about the piping plovers and ways you can help the plovers. And then in the back, there are some sources where you can see videos and pictures of real plovers, um, as well as other resources to learn more about the piping plovers. Now, you can also watch an interview that I did with Joanne Roach Evans, the author and illustrator of Little Piping Plover. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.